If you stay together until one of us dies, you win. That's it. It's the squid game. That's it. If you're still alive at the end, you win. She is dark as a skin. And it light and beautiful and bright as the sun. The salt of the earth. Fire burning and water dripping. How could be accusing goddess of magic? She is timeless. The pillar of the desert need a plug. She is the wildest woman. And let me say it again for those who need to hear it. The black woman is God. Let me say it again. The black woman is gone. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. Welcome to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo. Listen up, listen up. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, the original wireless woman, and welcome to my spot, room 303. If you are new, welcome to the crew, but returnees, you know what we do. If you like this video, well then like this video. Let the comments reveal how you really feel. And if you're feeling a vibe, well, go ahead on and subscribe. But before you blink, share that link. Welcome. Welcome back, Wi-Fi's to the Wireless Woman. And this episode is called The Marriage Box. I am really excited to share with y'all something that I call my marriage map. And as a two-time divorcee, if anyone should know how to add and subtract, it's me. So you already know what time it is. It is time to call that roll. So I need all of my single ladies. All the single ladies. All the single ladies. Any lady that doesn't have a ring. Baby, you single, okay? You single. If you ain't married, you're single. And I need you right on up here to the front of the class for Read Aloud. All right, so thank you for joining me here on The Wireless Woman. I am wearing my Magneto shirt to remind you all to remember that Magneto was right. In today's episode, the marriage box, I think it's going to open up some things that people don't necessarily think about when they conceptualize what marriage is. So hopefully we will all get a lot out of this. Go ahead and do me a favor, like this video on the way in. And I appreciate everyone who subscribes. I do need all of my subscribers and I have gotten several new subscribers and thank you so much. Like I really appreciate it. And I work very hard to make sure that you get a lot out of my content. I mean, everything from my lighting that I do, my light box in the back that is my mess message board, you know, hair, makeup, wardrobe, everything that I do is to make this an experience for people who come to this channel. And so I do really appreciate you spending time that you don't always have to come and meet with me here, which is why I try to make it cozy. <laughs> and hopefully, hopefully you leave not just with a cozy feeling of having watched something that was created by someone who genuinely deeply cares about you, but that you also leave with a knowledge, a self-awareness that arms you for the times that we live in. 
That's genuinely, honestly, my goal is to find a way for us to get through these times together. I really hope that when you come here, you can let your hair down a little bit and feel believed, believed in, heard, understood, and felt. And I try to manifest that rest and peace and understanding for other people who look like me through the lens of myself. So that's a little bit of wireless woman icebreaker. So I do have a couple of announcements. I am looking to partner with some local DJs and music producers in Charlotte to feature uncopyrighted music during my greetings and intros. Um, I do have my own theme song because as we know, every superhero needs theme music. And I got my theme music. Um, but I do want to be able to rep your city. Sorry, that was so old. That sounded like an old lady. But I do want to rep my city by featuring some artists because it really is such an eclectic underground sound here. Like that didn't used to be here when I was making music. It really didn't. Everybody wanted to sound like Atlanta. So I'm really, really proud of some of the artists that are coming up in Charlotte now that aren't trying to ride the baby train, but actually reaching down within themselves and representing the city with things that are organic. The drawing for my new subscriber giveaways is going to be on January the 28th. And I'm also announcing that I will be having some new segments some new guests, some interviews that are going to be coming in the next few weeks. My co-host Tanya Devine will finally, I have manifested her y'all, she's going to finally appear with her own weekly segment. Sooner than later, I am also going to start doing live sessions um, once I get my viewership and subscribership up. Just to be quite honest, I want to make sure that we have a very thriving, supportive community of people that can come in and really lend themselves to the issues and topics and conversations so that it really is a good time and not a waste of time. You know, right now we're all kind of coming into the channel on our own schedules and on our own times. And that's what I want to be able to do is make content available to you on your terms. But hopefully as we move forward building this community, we really can look forward to interacting in real time on lives. I'm also sending my prayers and my love and concern for those that are going to be affected by this snowstorm that's supposed to blanket the southeast. Just praying and hoping that you all come through it safely, that it's not as severe as predicted, and that you all have what you need at this time. Those are my announcements. These are the church announcements. And now the duels of the church are open. <laughs> Let's talk about the marriage box. During my second marriage, my ex-husband and I went through marriage counseling and we had what had to be one of God's greatest marriage counselors. Like if that man can't help you save your marriage, it's you don't want to. It just, it ain't, you can't. During my marriage counseling, he introduced to us the concept of the marriage box. And I found this concept to be so profound that it's something that I want to share with singles, engaged people, and even married people alike, because it just may have been something that you weren't aware of coming into matrimony. I think that if we're trained on what marriage is as we grow up, instead of this romanticized version that we're that we're sold by Hollywood, then we can better prepare as we go through life experiences to build and sustain healthy, viable marriages. It's just something that most of us in the black community don't have generationally 
coming down as a value in our families and communities. So when you're getting that image from Hollywood of what it is, you know, when you're looking at it from the outside, it's easy to idealize certain characteristics that don't actually lend themselves to a healthy, viable, sustainable marriage over the long term. So I've got a couple of concepts that I've added through all of my experiences to the marriage box. But basically, the marriage box is this. When we are dating someone and getting to know someone and building a relationship with someone, we get these gifts. We get gift boxes. And when you really want to impress someone, you'll wrap the gift up, put it in a nice little box, maybe some tissue paper. And in the dating phase, it may not even be extravagant gifts. It might be a, you know, pennant from a place that we went on our first date. It might be a ticket stub to the first movie we ever went to, or it could be a tennis bracelet. You know, it just depends on what your dating relationship is like. But these little gifts and mementos that you get along the way, they're wrapped up in these really extravagant, gorgeous boxes. And you have to think of yourself in a dating environment as being that type of box. You want to be the box that's picked. So you're going to adorn it. You're going to put bows on it. You're going to really, really, really work hard to make the gift look on the outside as special or as precious as the contents are, you know. When we were kids, our Christmas looked a certain way, but you get older and they just hand you a, a card or a bag. You know, you might get a bag from the store and it ain't even wrapped up or put in anything. You just hear Merry Christmas, you know, but the wonderment of Christmas or birthdays when we were kids was really represented in how the box was packaged. So all through your dating relationship, you get these elaborately packaged boxes with gifts in them. But when you go from the transient temporary relationship of dating into the long-term committed obligation of marriage, you get a different box. So the dating boxes come full of gifts and toys and presents and trinkets and, me and mementos. Whoever uses that word, mementos. Well, I just used that word, so then there's that. Um, anyway, but the marriage box is this big cardboard moving box. And when you get this box, it's empty. Because what most people marry people based on is the potential for a future that they can't see and don't have with that person marriage is not based on your past history with that person it's based on the future that's why you'll have so many people that can be in a relationship for a long amount of time then they get they're they're dating let's say for 10 years then they get married and they're divorced within two you know they've been together for eight years and then they get married and they're divorced within four because the boxes that you get in your dating life is not the marriage box. See, the marriage box comes empty because no one can get anything out of the marriage box that they didn't first put in. So you spend your time and your years filling your marriage box for all of the times that will come in the future when you need to take something out. It's like an empty bank account. And there's never anything in it that you didn't put in. It isn't like in the beginning when you're exchanging gifts for each other's favor. The marriage box comes empty. And it will always only have what its members put in. What the marriage partners put into that box. So if you put love in that box, there's love there. And if you put frustration or aggravation in that box, that's what's there. And so this box is intended to be the box at the end of your life that you can open up and look through and see what your marriage was comprised of. For instance, do any of y'all still have your high school yearbooks, 
you know, your, your class ring. I have a senior book that everybody signed. Do you still have pictures from your prompt? Well, that's what your high school experience was. It's in that box. When you think about the good times, you think about your bullies, all of those things are in your high school box. You got a letterman's jacket that you can't wear anymore. You know, all of these things, they don't fit you anymore, but you hold on to them because of what they represented in your life. So the marriage box works that way. It's not a gift that someone else gives to you. It is the moving box of your life that you take with you from house to house and place to place. And you eventually add to the things you put in your marriage box, mementos from your children. You put the obituary from your parents in that marriage box. And that box comprises all the most valuable things of your life and your marriage. And when you need the love, when you need the acceptance, when you need the forgiveness, when you need the compassion for a certain season in your life, when you need the space, when you need the understanding for a certain season of your life, it's there, it's in that box. You can go back to that box and get what you've put in. In other seasons, you can get the things that you deposited in good seasons you can make those withdrawals in the hard seasons and in the tough seasons. But if it's not in that marriage box, it won't be there when you need it. I'll give you an example from my own experience. Have you ever missed someone and then realized that you didn't actually miss the person and the actual experience? You missed what you wish that relationship had been. You missed what you wished had happened in those moments. You, you missed the potential of what those moments could be, not the reality of them. And that's how the marriage box works. It can't be the promises, the hopes, the wishes. It has to be the actual tangible time, commitment, effort. You know, what goes in a marriage box are the things that you did that you didn't want to do. Is the time that you made that you didn't have. The money that you spent that was a sacrifice. You know, the marriage box has to actually have stuff in it, not just hopes and wishes. And, you know, if wishes were horses, then beggars would ride them. The place where I have built on this concept as a woman is that marriage for women isn't what it is for men. And any men that I have on my channel that are listening to this, I really want you to hone in on what I'm about to say because I'm speaking to women, but I think it's valuable to understand each other's role, understand the mission from each other's eyes. Men ask a lot of times for submission from a woman for a woman to step in up underneath their mission as man, husband, father, guardian of the galaxy, whatever y'all got going on, without fully understanding that women themselves carry a mission within themselves who came into the world for a reason and a purpose that wasn't just simply to bring you your slippers like a faithful Labrador retriever. I have something that I've added to my concept of the marriage box called marriage math. So I subscribe to a concept that I call the four for four. Yes, the four for four. Not a combo at Wendy's, but actually the concept of you as a woman giving your best four years to a man in exchange for the worst four years. Particularly within the black race, women are known to, and I don't know what this is that I do. Sometimes when I'm recording, I, I be crack scratching, something that I call the crack scratch. And I don't, it's, it really is subconscious. I'm not itchy. I just, I don't know why I do this. The average age of death for men is 70 years old. For women, it's 77. These numbers change in the black race because, of course, our mortality rate is very different than that of other races and cultures. So as a black woman, you're more than likely going to outlive your husband. And if he's already older than you, 
you could spend your last 5, 10, 15, or 20 years by yourself. Now, a man who's 75 can still get a 50, 55, 60-year-old woman. A man who's 60 can still get a 35, 40-year-old woman, maybe even less depending on, you know, if he got that bag or not. So we as women have to really decide if we're going to give our best four years for a man's worst four years to be the one who changes the colostomy bag, who gets the medications and make sure he's taking them. You know, if you're going to be the woman that's there when the foot is amputated, if you're going to be the woman there to make the call, whether or not life support is going to be extended or taken off, if you're going to be the one that's there to change the bed pans and you got to really decide if you're going to give your best for the first four years of a marriage are the best for. And you got to look at whether or not this person is the person that you want to give your young life, you know, your vitality and strength, the best four years that you got to give to a marriage in exchange for the worst four years that you'll probably go through with this person. There's no way to determine that a person's going to be sick for years and years. And you hope that that won't be the case. But that's what marriage is. Marriage is not this is the person I want to go on vacation with and have lots of fun, hot sex with and that we look good in pictures together and we'll probably make pretty babies. Marriage is the person that you literally want to feed applesauce to. That Marriage is the person whose hand you want to hold at the end of your days or theirs. That's it. Marriage is not about good times and bad times. It's not good versus bad. It's win versus lose. If you stay together until one of us dies, until one of us dies, you win. That's it. It's the squid game. That's it. If you're still alive at the end, you win. If you die still together, you win. That's it. That's what marriage is. And my stepfather died when I was 15. Watching and being a part of taking care of a dying person makes you realize what's important in life, makes you realize what's in the marriage box and why that box has to come empty. That box comes empty because it allows you to fill it with all the potential of what a lifetime with someone can be. And you don't bring anything with you into that. You don't bring anything with you into this life. You don't take anything with you out in the marriage box is that you don't bring anything with you into a marriage. Not even some of the things that have gone on in your relationship prior to that. Once you make that commitment and the two become one, that's a new life. That's a new box. It's a brand new empty box. The same way a baby is a new life and they come into the world with nothing. They come in naked, no clothes, no possessions, no personality, nothing. Whatever your marriage can possibly become, you got to start it with an empty box. And let me, let me make a side note here. My stepfather was not a good man. He was not a kind man. But in all the years that he could do for us, he had done. So when it was our time to do for him, it was in the box. All we had to do was go to the box and pull out the deposits that had already been made. He made sure after he was gone, we were financially able to take care of burying him and ourselves after he was gone. It was in the box. Everything that we needed, even after he was gone, was still in that box. So as a woman who will probably have your children or a nurse in a hospital be the one to hold your hand into the dark you have to really really take time to vet these men and let them be the ones to show you how valuable you are to them because you will be making those decisions in the end you will be changing those bed sheets with any number of fluids that you can't even identify on them and if you're going to be that person who takes the hardest years of a man's life in your hands, then you should be the person who's treated to the utmost value of him throughout life.
You should be the person with the most in your box. And I'll take you one step further. A woman is a multiplier. If you look at marriage as being one plus one equals two, then you're going to miss the function of a woman. So let's look at the movie, The Matrix, right? In The Matrix, you have Neo. You rearrange the letters in his name. It means one. He's the one. He's one. But Trinity's name is Trinity. She's three. Okay, one times one is one. But one times three is three. It's the multiplier. It takes the one and out of the one comes three. Because Neo's one with Trinity's three gives you three, the man, woman, and child, the father, son, and the Holy Ghost. A man is raised to his deity through the multiplication of the woman. The man is immortalized and he is given resurrected life through the birth of his child. And only a woman can give you that third person in the Godhead. God comes and he, God's Holy Spirit comes and makes a child through Mary. And that's where you get the son that we worship. The woman is the multiplying factor, the triune, the trinity. Why do you think in the movie Trinity is called Trinity? The man is one, the woman is three. The woman is the multiplier that raises the man to his highest power. So we have to stop looking at marriage as being this reward that we get from men who choose to bestow it upon us. It's their livelihood. It's the way they're, they're multiplied and their life goes on. They go from being Mr. Jerome Pettis Jr. to being Mr. and Mrs. Jerome Pettis Jr. And I made that name up. I think that might be a football player or something, but I, I don't know. I just was picking names out the sky. So he goes from being Mr. Tom Jones the third to being Mr. and Mrs. Tom Jones the third. And from Mrs. Tom Jones the third comes Mr. Tom Jones the fourth. And now you have Mr. Mrs. and child Tom Jones. All these people are going to be named for this one man. So now he's become a king of a kingdom. He's become the God of a religion all through the multiplication of that woman. And these men can not do this without us. And not just our bodies, our physical presence, because we cook for them, because we, it is your wisdom. It is your power, your energy that defines everything that he can and be. Because here's the thing. If y'all don't work out, you divide them in half. You divide them by two, you take half. Together you multiply, apart you divide. And that multiplying factor of everything you gave him in his life, you gave him the ability to work twice as hard because you were taking care of his home for him. He didn't have to be in two places at one time. That means that you can go and pick the car up from the mechanic, pick up the kids, get the groceries from school while he's at work. Men ask you, what do you bring to the table? Well, if you want to drop the car off at the mechanic, get the kids, get the shopping list from the grocery store, come home, cook the food, do the laundry, uh, fold the laundry, make up your bed, have sex with yourself, well, then you do all that. But as a woman, you are the multitasker. You're the multiplying force. You're able to speak two to three times more words in a day than a man is. You have both, both, you have both hemispheres of your brain intact where you're able to be creative and delegate a duty at the same time. Men have the hemispheres in their brain severed with testosterone in utero. You're capable of processing information far faster than he is. And. 
you can make children. Don't ever let a man question your value or make you think somehow that a marriage to him is to be prized when baby, you gonna have to exchange four for four. So if he's not giving you his best up front, understanding that on his best day, it still wouldn't be enough for what you are expected to give to his life, then you, my dear, are with the wrong person. We have to stop valuing men that don't value women, that don't value institutions that build the community like education and marriage. You know, and entrepreneurship. These are tenants that make strong communities and nations. And you got men that don't even want to build. They don't want to work with their hands. They don't want to have skills. But yet they're telling you they're high value. Make it make sense. Help me understand that how we're expected to submit to a group of men that don't have a vision, who don't know the value of things or how to build things like marriages, schools, um, businesses. Asking you, what do you bring to the table? When our whole community is in shambles, and this is a side note, but I got to say it, I'm meeting a lot I have a lot of really awesome men in my life and I understand that it's a prized thing to be a good man. But if your goodness is not creating any sort of change in our environment, what is the value of it? We got good cops. But we don't talk about the good cops when we have a problem. We talk about the bad cops. And the first thing that we as black people say is if the good cops aren't making the bad cops better, are they really good cops? If these good cops aren't the ones that are calling out these bad cops and holding them accountable, then what is even the purpose of being a good cop in a cricket system? So I just want to put that out here. I'm meeting a lot of great men, educated men, gentlemen with good values. But if you're not out here in your community, if you're a man who, who thinks that because you're good, you can be 45 and 50 before you have to marry a woman, you are part of the problem. Because marriages build generational wealth and they pass on value systems to children that we are going to need our next generation to have. We're going to need men in the household. And if you go all the way back to my BAM challenge video, that's what I asked. I said, okay, you're a good man. You're great. You don't have a criminal record. You don't do anything wrong. Great. Well, why is it that we have, me and my friend Tanya talked about how our sons waited years in big brothers and big sisters just to get big brothers. My son never got a black big brother he ended up after two years of waiting getting an older white man to be his mentor if you such good men how many women and children in your community do you take care of and assist and lend your goodness to if you go home and you watch the game for two and a half hours and you can't be active in the life of a child, of a black boy that looked just like you, I question your goodness. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. If a young black man can't come to your house and find the support that he needs, I'm not going to just call you good because of the absence of doing bad things. I'm not going to just call you good because you haven't done what Tyrone has done. Because most of y'all hang out with Tyrone and will not hold Tyrone accountable, but you'll tell women they should have chose better. But then you'll side with other men when you feel like they got taken by a woman. When the honest goodness truth is, if we would just take care of our community, we wouldn't have to worry about anybody trying to get over on anybody else. If we would stop being capitalistic white supremacist agents, if we would stop being Smiths, in our own community.
And I didn't intend to turn this marriage box episode into a political commentary about what's going on in this country, but marriage is a socioeconomic political institution. We're not able to form or maintain marriages in the black community because we don't understand the value of it. And I can't speak to black men and their experience. I don't want to try to anymore. I want to stand here on this boundary line and defend what it is to be a black woman. And to elevate the value of what being a black woman is, of what being a wife and a mother is. Because if we can get this right, if we can hold the fort here and be good women and good wives and good children, we have power to change our community. If these good black men haven't figured that out, if they're if they're using all of their energy and efforts to try to escape the state of the black nation, let them go. If they want white women, non-black women, anything that look just like us but ain't us, let them have it. I'm not going to watch my community burn to the ground chasing behind men. They get on national platforms and let us know that they don't want us. And then all these good black men that are silently complicit. We don't need them either. We're going to have to focus in on how we can show up, support each other, take care of these children, get these degrees, start these businesses, run for political office, do the things that our community needs us to do. Because as much as people think that at the height of American civilization, they're going to cut us a piece of the pie. If these voting rights, if these voting rights acts haven't shown you what this country think about black people in 2022, if the unwillingness to forgive student loan debt doesn't tell you what this country think about poor and colored people, because I mean, they didn't have no problem getting the Asian Violence Act through. I don't know what it's called, y'all. Don't judge me. They had no problem protecting Asians. Got it done like that. So if black men want to be white men in an attempt to feel like they have equality in this country, fine. But that's not what Hispanics are doing. That's not what Asians are doing. That's what that's not what Indians are doing. They're keeping their culture, keeping their families intact building whole communities within this country and they're taking over the middle class. They're gaining on the rich white people in this country just by sticking together. You don't see Asian men on platforms talking about the reason why they don't want to marry Asian women. This is our problem, but it doesn't have to be. So women, I want you to understand what marriage is. It is a vehicle for generational wealth building and you're going to have to pick your men better than this because you're going to have to understand your value coming into the situation and stop being male identified and getting on these platforms, coddling these men because where has it gotten us after decades and decades and decades and decades of being our husband's moms? It's not making men. Us calling them gods and kings and all this stuff isn't making them want to be better men. It's making them want to try polygamy. It's causing them to be 45 talking about they want to be a father and a husband. And now they need a 25-year-old woman to do it. And now you got droves of 40 and 50-year-old women that don't have husbands. Because they rather groom a child then rise to the standard and grow with a mature woman that's his age. They can help him plan for retirement. He'd rather spend all his money on a, a PYT. 
Like we got screwed up trash values in our culture and in our race. And it's time somebody say something about it. It's time somebody get and be real about that. I don't want to get on here every day and pussyfoot sugarcoat for people. I don't want to tap dance Mr. Bojangles for people on this channel. So if you're going to have an empty box anyway, after you marry these men, if you're going to go through all that shucking, jiving, and dancing for the man in your dating process just to get an empty box anyway, you better get a box that's big enough, durable enough for what life brings you in a marriage. Like Erica Badu talked about the bag lady. Let's talk about the box man. You're not going to get that from the takeout box man. You're not going to get that from the moving box man. You're not going to get what you need from the Amazon box man. You need a wooden chest box. You need a sturdy family heirloom box. You need the type of box that you can pass on to your children. And if a man can't build that type of box for you, fuck him. Not fuck him. Fuck him. Leave him alone. Because why on earth would you spend five to 15 years of your life alone? And give your young life to somebody that don't value your sacrifice. Video after video that I have made has been talking to women about the value of your mind, spirit, and body. And we have been, and we have been deceived, duped, and bound up by the spirit of this age. By narcissistic, misogynistic men that are destroying our community. And I don't want to see it no more. I want to see you love yourself. I want to see you magnified in the mirror of a man that loves your heart. That can pour something into you that'll be left after he's gone. I got a daughter. And I want to show and teach her that men can be better than this. But they can't be better than this if they're not better than this to me. So that's it for this one. I am Debbie and Nikki, your neighborhood wireless woman. If you dug this video, go ahead and drop a headphones emoji into the comments for me. So as always, be unplugged, unbothered, and unleashed on this wireless journey. Class is now dismissed. See you around. Want to control me?